In John chapter 3, some of us know the story of one Pharisee of the law uh, called uh, who? Nicodemus. He comes in the night like most do. Praise God. It's funny that he couldn't come during day. I think he was fearing his friends that they might say, Ee, Nicodemus, what are you doing with that guy? Praise God. So Nicodemus comes at night. Praise the Lord. And through Jesus Christ, he knows who Jesus is. He knows what Jesus can do. He knows the ability of the Christ. He knows that you can't do just miracles like that except the Lord be with you. You all know the story. I've preached, in fact, a sermon in that line. But it's not quite what I'm going to touch tonight. I just use the same reference, but some deeper or different. And when Jesus starts to introduce the message of salvation to Nicodemus, Nicodemus doesn't seem to understand anything. And in the 10th verse of John 3, he says, As thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things. Are you a master, and you don't know these things? Are you a pastor, and you don't know these things? <laughs> Are you an apostle, and you don't know these things? Are you a prophet, and you don't know these things? Are you a preacher of the word, and you don't know these things? Are you a teacher of the word and knowest not these things? Are you uh, a, a graduate from theology school with a master's degree in theology, but you knowest not these things? Have you been in salvation for 10 years, 15 years, 16 years, 17 years, 20 years in the gospel and knowest not these things? You know, some people even boast of the years they've spent, which is sometimes a good thing, but sometimes also deceptive. I have been born again for 60 years. And he said, yeah, 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 praise God. But sometimes it's not how long you were born again. Sometimes it's if you are a master, if you've been in salvation this long, there are certain things you must know. Somebody shout Hallelujah. You cannot be a master and you don't know these things. Mastery here is maturity. Are you considered mature in the faith and you don't know these things? Am I, am I, am I making sense? Or are you following? So, Jesus asks a fundamental question that I believe is going to be the center of what I'm going to share tonight. Because tonight, I'm going to share something uh, or rather an idea that defines what true maturity is according to the message. Remember, for those of you who attended last week, I touched the three voices, right? The voice that draws the distinctions of your destiny, your, your purpose, right? The voice that designs the judgments of God. And the third one was the voice of the message. And I say that if a man doesn't know these three voices... The Bible says it may be many voices in the world, but there's none without signification. But the Bible says, but if I know not the meaning of the voice, the Bible says, I am become what? A barbarian. That means I, I appear strange to God because I don't understand the voice of destiny and eternal purpose pertaining my life. That means I can't plot the, the different places of, of milestones for my destiny. When I go off, purpose I will not know because sometimes the gift upon you can be very deceptive but sometimes even when you walk off the off purpose you might never know until later when it's almost as clear that the direction of bearing is off and some people re, 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 um, uh, discover it late when they can't change many things so I shared why or how important it is uh, for you to know and understand the voice of God in those three uh, distinctions the things that pertain to your course. That's why the Bible says in Psalms, teach us to number our days that you might apply our hearts unto your wisdom. You don't live your life by accident. You don't live your life by eh? uh, uh, proxy. No. You live your life in a certainty of understanding that at this stage I'm supposed to be here. At this age I'm supposed to be here. At this time of my life I'm supposed to be here doing this and doing that in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody say amen. Likewise, the judgments of God. To know how God judges things depending on the covenant of which you're seated under or functioning under. 
because many times we find trouble convincing people that you are preaching the judgments of an Old Testament dispensation or uh, that which the Bible says has waxed old and is ready to give way. Ours is a righteous judge. Somebody say amen. And to also understand the voice of the message. Now, if you were here last Thursday, I touched more of the issue of the judgments and the issues of destiny, but not much on the issue of the message. And that's what I want to touch, uh, touch tonight and then probably we'll get out of here. Now, tonight I want to define for you true maturity in the voice of the message. Because like I say, some people say, ah, I'm so mature. I've, you, you know, one time some guy, he was on some media platform. Then he said, then there are these young boys. They call themselves apostles. Boy, young boys. So I said, hey, wait. So apostolic is age related. Okay, praise God. It's we young boys, you understand? And I, I, I think I understood why he was saying that. Okay? No offense. But there, there seems to be a form of intimidation when people plot their level of maturity against how long they've been in the faith or the ministry. It in turn, if it is based on the right foundation, it's beautiful. Because that's the sure foundation of the maturity of the anointing. You know, we are all anointed in different fronts. And we can all do this. You see, you, you can do, I can do something right now. And I repeat the same act 10 or 20 years to come. But that act as repeated will come with a particular maturity in the anointing. When a man has matured in the anointing of the Holy Spirit, there is a way that man responds to the things of the Spirit and the things of the Spirit respond to him. Because the mark of this maturity is mature discernment, mature judgment. You understand what I'm saying? When we had just gotten born again, for example, if you remember some of you, fanatics also came and kind of came into the meetings wherever we're at in different uh, churches. Somebody, for example, receives a prophetic word. Eh? And their baby, they've just gotten born again and they are, they are filled with the Holy Spirit. And it's true they're filled with the Holy Spirit. But they have not matured in discernment. The anointing on them is not mature. And he says, you stand up. The Lord told me you were with a man last week. Oh, the prophet has spoken. You understand? And then the person says, it's true. Then, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. From that day, everybody knows the prophetess is in the house. You understand what I'm saying? And because some can't reconcile their spirit versus the spirit of the Lord in the office of the prophetic, you know when the Bible says that the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet? You understand? The spirit of the prophet is not the spirit of prophecy. I want you to understand what I'm saying. The spirit of the prophet is not the spirit of prophecy. The spirit of prophecy has the underlying testimony of Jesus Christ. He is the spirit that drives the spirit of the prophet. Why the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet? It is because God wants to reconcile this prophet's judgment against the spirit of prophecy. So the prophet ought to know what he will say, where he will say it, and to whom he should say it to. List there now is a wanting of accountability. Over you casting pearl to swine, they will trample on it and rent you. Or are you moving in a sort of madness because you're excited by the things you can see? Or because you saw, not by purpose, but because you lusted for the things to see. Oh God, I want to see. Why? I don't even have a reason, but I just want to see. Why? Just for the sake of seeing, because I want to see in the spirit. Why do you really want to see? I just want to see. That is why I shared with somebody and I told them, we are not chosen because of the things we find. We are chosen because of the things that found us. You understand what I'm saying? That is why when we enter the spirit realm, we are led by the Holy Spirit. 
We don't choose where to go in the spirit. Are you hearing me? That's familiarity. That's a fermentation of a familiar spirit. It fosters yielding to another voice which is not the voice of God. But sometimes we're even speaking to people who don't carry the basic wisdom to know the difference between what I'm saying and what I'm not saying. You understand? So if I shout like that, say, hey, this person is against. No, I'm not against anything. The apostolic can't be against anything. Because our work is simple. I'm a messenger of God. Are you hearing me? But I'm trying to explain that even these things I've shared, if there's a shadow of doubt with anybody who might not agree with these things, it's either because maybe some have not tested of a certain place in God, all have lasted where purposes should be. Do you know there's a person who just wakes up in the morning without purpose and he just wants to see the spirit? You understand what I'm saying? Just, you, 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 when we're growing up, eh? Eh? when we're growing up, you see, kids, kids love routine repetition because there's a short gratification to them, right? You get a little kid and then throw them up in the air. Whee! And she goes up again, again, again. Hey, you guys, time up. You have to go bathing. Eh? Hey, bring the kid to bathe again. Go and bathe. Ah! The kid starts screaming and throwing tantrum. Again, I want to go. You understand? Eh? And then you have a problem. Eh? Uh, purpose, you need to bathe. You understand? <laughs> Gratification, immediate. That car fix, you want to jump in the air. What should we do? Okay, let's do it three more times. Okay. Again. Two. Again. Three. Again. Yeah. Okay, gun bait. No. <laughs> so some people are like that. Spiritually. <laughs> show me again. No, now it's not purpose for you to see. No, show me again. No, no, now it's not purpose for you to see. No, show me again. Then a familiar spirit comes and says, oh, me, I can show you. If God is not willing, me, I can show you. You can show me? Yes. Anytime? Yes. You mean anytime? Yes. Show me. <laughs> Praise God. We don't choose what we see. He chooses what we see. Praise God. Because he leads us. For as many as are led by the spirit of God, so are they the sons, the heoses, the mature ones of God. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. It's maturity to wait on the Lord, to hear him, and be satisfied with what he shows you. What you don't see, you don't need. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. And what you see, you need. And it's beautiful. Somebody say Amen. So we are dealing sometimes with are still touching the maturity of the anointing. That should be another someone. As the anointing on your life matures, that might be either by reason of the years you have demonstrated and walked in that grace or by reason of the experiences you have found in the time when you availed yourself in the same grace. Some people might not be in the gospel for 20 or 30 years, but the experiences they have are so deep that it's as though they have been there 20 years. It's possible. It's possible. So the maturity of the anointing either comes by reason of age, physical, or by reason of deeper experiences as to how much a man has availed themselves according to the hunger in their spirits. God can satisfy any hunger. The difference between the hunger of the spirit and the lust of the flesh is one simple truth. That the lust of the flesh seeks to the fulfillment of a man's fleshly desires. And the hunger of the spirit seeks the things of God. Praise the Lord Jesus. It is the place where he commits to you. He entrusts you. And you commit to him what he has entrusted you. What Paul calls you understand? He says, for I'm not ashamed and I perceive and I have the knowledge of. He says that I am 
persuaded that he is able to guard and keep that which has been entrusted to me and which I have committed unto him. He entrusts you and you commit to him. So even in the place where there's a desire for expansion of the tent, the, 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 the growth and, and, and the stretching forth and, and that place where he tells us that uh, spread your nets and, 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 and what? Withhold not or, or spare not. That, that place for the mature anointing does not seek for the man. It seeks for God. Somebody say amen. Now, we're dealing with masters in Israel who know not some things. We're dealing with people who have been in the gospel for so long and they know not some things. And we're dealing with people who think they know, but they do honestly don't know. And you can't tell them that you don't know. Are you hearing me, somebody? Now, let me read something for you in Romans chapter 2, verses 17 and 21 to 21, I think. He says, if you bear the name of the Jew, or if thou art called a Jew, and resteth in the law, uh, and maketh thy boast of God, and knowest his will. Remember, this man has rested in the law. Rested in the law. Rested in the law. Rested in the law, meaning that he has built his conviction only in the law. Cannot go out of that. Are you following? So, and knowest the will of God, and approveth the things that are more excellent, being instructed out of the law, and art confident that thou thyself art a guide of the blind, a light of them that are in darkness. And I want you to note this. An instructor of the foolish, a teacher of babes, which has the form, listen, the form of knowledge and of truth in the law. Praise the Lord. He has a form of knowledge and of truth in the law. And the next verse says, Thou therefore, which teachest another, teachest thou not thyself? You who teaches another, don't you teach yourself? Paul is literally saying that even if this person thinks that they are a star, they are an instructor to the blind, they are, you know, they have rested in the law, they know the will of God and all these kinds of things. When Paul says, unto, I mean, he says, teachest thou not thyself? Don't you teach yourself? In other words, he's talking to people who honestly don't know, but they do not know that they don't know. And therefore they continue to assume a position of too much knowledge and authority enough to teach when they are not able to be teachers. And that's why he continues to say, you tell a man don't steal. Why then do you, will you steal or why then do you steal? Oh, Okay, let me make it simpler in the language you should understand. If you are so good with understanding the law, why do you still break it? Because we are all sinners. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> That's not true. That's what you think is because you want to provide for your ignorance. But it is not so. Think with me, somebody. It's not so. It's not so. The spirit of the Lord coming to you primarily was to teach you. He was to teach you. He says, this anointing that abides in you, the Bible says, he shall teach you. And the same, the Bible says, he, the same, he shall teach you to abide in him. The primary ministry of the Holy Spirit upon your life is to what? To teach you. He says, the anointing which you have received of him abideth in you, and you need not that any man teach you, but the same anointing, the Bible says, teacheth you. If you are a person who flows in the anointing of the Holy Spirit, and you are not taught, there's a problem. That is why I tell people, me fly in the air, flip, lift chairs, throw mountains to the end, if I hear that the degree of anointing upon which you function equals to the level of the knowledge you carry. You'll take me away. But if I should see an anointing that does not equal to the level of revelation that you carry, you're going to have a problem with Rebecca Grace and a few people here. You understand what I'm saying? Because today in our generation, other things have come into the church. I tell you, up to now, I still fear to say those things because some of you, the way you're looking at me, I'll have trouble 
with you walking in the wisdom to differentiate between what I'm saying and what I'm not saying, how many of you have seen certain things on TV and you're like, but this is not God? Put up your hand. Nga, nga, they, they look like God. They, they are on godly channels. They are, they, they are on spiritual channels. But you look at it and say, mm -hmm. Do I have witnesses? Uh -huh. So, you will be my... When I, 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 I'm still collecting strength, but I'll share those things. Praise God. Praise God. So, sometimes when we go back to the basics of telling you that your primary place with the Holy Spirit, every time you feel the Holy Ghost, teach me. Teach me. When the Spirit of the Lord settled on Daniel, the Bible says he was a man and though to answer had sentences. Had sentences. The other spirit, the Bible says, ministers questions rather than godly edification, which is after faith. Because it is in meats and endless genealogies. You understand what I'm saying? It is in meats and endless genealogies. It ministers questions rather than godly edification. And so you see, certain people sit under anointings, but they don't grow. They're not edified in the spirit. You find a person, they've been under a meeting for 20 years, 15 years, 3, 4, and nothing on them has, has changed. They've not matured. Because there's no godly edification, which is after faith. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The truth makes men free. It doesn't set. It makes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, somebody. So, Paul is here speaking of guys in Romans who have a form of knowledge. It's a form of knowledge in truth, in the law. They have a form of knowledge and of truth in the law. It's a form of knowledge and of truth. Do you have some like the New Living Translation of that very 2.20? Romans 2.20, NLT? Uh -huh. For you are certain that God's law gives you complete knowledge and truth, yes. These people are sure that when they read the law, it gives them complete knowledge and truth. They are rested in the law. Not as of the general word of logos. But here the word in the Greek is nomos. The law of Moses. Civil, legislative, whatever it is. All of that, even the Ten Commandments inclusive. Praise God. So there are people who are skilled and have rested their ministries in the what? In the law. And Paul is saying... How do you teach others and you can't teach yourself? Because he sees there's a problem already with those who are teaching it. He sees there's a challenge with those who have built a form. Do you have an ESV? The English Standard Version? Having, yes, thank you. An instructor of the foolish, comma, a teacher of children, comma, having in the law, listen, having in the law the embodiment of knowledge and truth. The, in the law, for them, when they look at the law, it's the embodiment of knowledge and truth. They know everything about God and anything called truth about God in the law. They don't go outside the law to know God. Have you, have you understood? So in the law, they have the embodiment of knowledge and truth. Everything they call knowledge, everything they call truth is in the law of Moses. Not outside it. So when you take away the law, what you're speaking is not knowledge and what you're speaking is not truth. Oh, have you understood that? And their masters in Israel. Hebrews 5, 13. For everyone, for everyone, give me the amplified. For everyone who continues to feed on milk. Now, who feeds on milk? Babies, right? Mature people eat what? Meat. For everyone who continues to feed on milk is obvious, obviously, inexperienced, listen, and unskilled in the doctrine of righteousness. For he is a mere infant not able to talk yet. That means spiritually that person is not, has not the ability to communicate. Does it shock you why the man who receives the law was a stutterer? He used to stammer. Oh, 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 you, da, 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 because the law can't talk. 
<laughs> the law can't what? It cannot talk. That's why Moses, you think God would not have healed Moses' stammering just like that? He would heal his stammering. But the law is not meant to talk. That is why when you read the law, it's a command. It doesn't communicate beyond command. Don't. It doesn't tell you why, how, which way. No. Don't. Commit. <laughs> so anybody who is who takes milk is unskilled in the doctrine of righteousness. Anybody who takes meat is skilled in the doctrine of righteousness. That's the opposite of that. Anybody who has not understood the doctrine of righteousness. I don't care how many degrees they have on them. I don't care how many years they've spent in the, in the church. I don't care how much they think they know. I don't care how many dead men they've raised. They're still babes. Righteousness is a doctrine. For those of you who have read church history, it was the separator of the Roman Catholic church then and the Protestant church before. You remember Martin Luther? The 95-page thesis that he nails on the Wittenberg church and the title, Justification by Faith. And that is what separate so these days. Some people don't even know what they're protesting anymore. So say, I'm a protestant. What are you protesting? <laughs> Protestantism began as a place of reconciling the, back the church, it was a season of sort of reformation. You understand what I'm saying? Because they realize that revivals are not enough if they carry not reformation. And if revivals carry not reformation, men cannot be truly awakened. They cannot be enlightened to see what is the hope of their calling, the glorious riches of inheritance of the saints, the exceeding greatness of power that is at work within them, the same that he wrote when he raised Christ from the dead. They cannot because their eyes cannot see. Revival is beautiful. But how many revivals have we seen? And then you go in a revival, for example, and they've, they've, they say, oh, in that revival, 100,000 souls came to Christ. And then you say, okay, let's now go back to all those 100,000 souls and look for one at a time. How many stayed in the face? That is why next year, I'm going to reduce a bit on the crusades and then invest more on ministry. Ministers, right? Ministers. In fact, this year I'm going to have one ministers conference. But I've, I've realized that we are getting too many souls to Christ. But the substance of these souls, the quality of the ministers that have transitioned, the maturity, the ministry is wanting. The things that are wanting, like Titus says, have not been set in order before men are appointed. You find a guy and he says, I'm a pastor. The way he talks, the way he thinks, the way he acts, the way he responds, the way he does his things, you, don't, you can't connect it. Now in Uganda, we have people who... But locally we can scream. But locally we can what? We can scream. We, you, and we can scream and you're like, oh my God. <laughs> but the quality of Christianity, the quality, the quality of Christianity. How much does an average Murokole know? How much does an average pastor know? Versus what he thinks he knows. Or she thinks she knows. Somebody one time recently sent me a, a voice note. I listened to a certain someone. I said, God, save Uganda. Like rightly, one man said that the church in Africa is one mile long and one inch deep. People have church, right? People can pray. But you get an average fellow and you want to know how much is inside them and tears come to you. When you start hearing what people are saying, even the common sense now, before even we go into depths of scriptures, the articulations of mysteries, and no, th some things are common sense. You understand what I'm saying? Basic Christian ethics, but they are not in the church of Jesus Christ today. 
You find a man, he has a position. He says, that guy is a bishop. And a bishop is in, is in cheap talk. Can you believe this person did this and then they bought him? Can you believe? You understand? A bishop. You understand what I'm saying? You go read the Bible, the qualification of what it takes to be a bishop. Praise the Lord. He can't teach and he's a bishop. The Bible says he must be able to teach. Able to teach. Able to teach. Beholding the doctrine of Christ with a pure conscience. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Pure conscience. The conscience is purified. So he said, he's an apostle. What do you mean by you are an apostle? An apostle is a special messenger. That person must carry both the spirit of reformation, but also a very distinctive message that defines the apostolic spirit. But every, I'm an apostle. Why? Because they just want to be an apostle. More apostles, they are church planters. Apostles are not. And when you ask this person, what, what do you mean by church planting? The person says, church planting? I mean, they're talking about buildings and commissioning men to preach. Men who are not ready. But because they can add them on their pedigree, right? They can add them on their portfolio. That one, I'm the one here, then he released him into ministry. But was he able? Was he qualified? Was he fit for the work of ministry? Somebody shout hallelujah. He wasn't fit. He was not fit. Some people can't handle, they are not ready, appoint not a novice, list out of pride, he will be what? He will be destroyed and many are destroyed in the middle. Because for us it's the numbers, how many people have you come, we have commissioned more than 3,000. What, what, what have those 3,000 people done? Jesus touched 12 men only. And the world was changed. 12 men only. 12 men only. He poured himself into them and that was it. Somebody shout hallelujah. So we need, we need to revisit this thing we call church. When the Bible says you shall be heads, the first shall be last. Africa is rising. Hallelujah. Africa is what? Rising. And we can only go as high as deep we are. Oh, you didn't get it. You read the love of God. It speaks of the breadth, right? It speaks of the length it speaks of the depth and the height you can only go science architect right you can only go as high as how deep you've established a building isn't it so if we are not deep enough there are certain places we cannot touch spiritually that is why baloko look like they're the brokest people there the most programless people there but look what they look like they're the most disadvantaged people. The guys who spend nights in overnights, almost 80% of them are not, they're, 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 they're not employed. It must change in the name of Jesus. What did he mean when he said you shall lend to nations? You shall be the head and not the tail above and not beneath. You shall go upward and upward only for the path of the just shines bright and bright unto a perfect day. I must see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. We need a certain quality. That you find a businessman. He's not doing much. But he's a rich chap. He's humble. You ask him a question in the Bible and he blows you away. And ask him, why aren't you a preacher? No, I wasn't called to preach, but I know these things. <laughs> Tell your neighbor they're talking about me right there. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. Anyway, there's a lot to share there, but... To be continued. <laughs> so, the doctrine of righteousness was up to now. The church is fighting the same war. It has never changed. Law, grace, righteousness, imputed righteousness, worked for. Up to today, it's the biggest dividing factor in the Christendom. 
Am I saved by works? Am I saved through faith? His righteousness given to me because I believe. His righteousness given to me because of works. And they think that because we believe in a righteousness by faith, therefore we don't believe in works. No. The works follow the faith. The faith does not follow the works. The works follow the faith. Right believing, right living. It's somewhere in the message Bible. Praise the Lord. Now, if righteousness comes by the law, right? If there was any law, Paul says, wherewith we could receive life, then righteousness should not have come by faith. That means that there is no law written in scripture by which men can have life. It's not there. The letter kills. The Bible says, the letter what? Kills. The ministry of the spirit by which we have received righteousness, imputed on you, you receive that righteousness, that blessed grace to be righteous before God because you believed. That's the righteousness of God. It's different from the righteousness of men. Men have their own righteousness. The Bible calls it filthy rags. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says man at his, at his best is still what? Vanity. It's still fake. Even at your best, you have cleaned yourself, you have even had a bath. You have not lied in the morning. You are clean. You're still vanity. So God takes away your righteousness. And then he comes with his righteousness. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 3 verses 20 says, And now the righteousness of God. The Bible says the righteousness of God, the righteousness. He says the righteousness of God without the law, without the law, without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and by the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ upon all of them that believe for there is no difference for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ. <laughs> justified freely through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. That's the righteousness of God. That's his righteousness. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But I don't care what you did if you're a believer. I don't care what you did. I have good news for you. Justified freely. But aren't you telling people? I don't care what you think I'm telling people. I'm not going to clash with the word of God to satisfy your conscience. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, in Romans, I think it's somewhere in Galatians chapter 2. Where Paul speaks of how some people who think that because we use Jesus Christ eh, for our justification, we are over bad. For them, they're the good ones. You understand what I'm saying? For, they think that because we use Jesus and we refuse to rely on our strength, some people think that we are the wicked ones. I'll teach it one day in, in a good time. Now, God has said, if a man does not understand the doctrine of righteousness, that man is a babe. He will take milk. So if you hear a person preaching or sharing the word, and they are speaking of righteousness by works, place them where they belong. Teach them, or if they can't allow to be taught, excuse yourself humbly. Tell them I've got an emergency call. Praise the Lord Jesus. Galatians chapter 3. For the law was the schoolmaster. Why was it a schoolmaster? Because it was taking babes, children to school. Are you hearing me? Yes. That's why it was a schoolmaster. He says wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. Give me the amplified of that. Wherefore, he says the law served to us Jews as our trainer, our guardian, our guide to Christ to lead us until Christ came, that we might be justified, declared righteous, put in right standing with God by and through faith. 
But now that faith has come, now that faith has come, now that faith has come, we are no longer under a trainer, the guardian of our childhood. When we're children, we're led by the Lord. When we matured, we are now led by Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. The law is for babies. The law is for babies. When we mature, Jesus takes the place of the law. And faith now starts to lead you. Not your own ability. Somebody shout hallelujah. Galatians chapter 4 verses 3. The Bible says, even so, when we were children... Nepios, spiritual babies. We were in bondage under the elements of the world when we were babies. You know, I, I was teaching recently in school of ministry and I said, the general term for the children of God is technon. You are the technon of God. But when you are the technon of God, amidst us are the beloved darlings who have just gotten born again, who are called technions, right? They're babies, they're adorable. Like you look at this little thing walking and you're like, ooh. Is sweet. Then it pees in its pants and it says, Ooh, pee. You understand? But there is an age where this child, where they're still children, but there's an age where if they do it, you become African. <laughs> Americans can't understand what I just said. You become what? African. But at that age, they are not yet mature. They, 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 are, they become, they get into a stage called Nepios. They're spiritual babies. But Nepios is a stage which you have a choice over as you continue to grow. You have the choice to either grow into a spiritual mature child, adopted of God, Hios, or you have the choice of staying a babe. Praise the Lord Jesus. Jesus was always referred as a heos. He was a mature son of the, of the father. Heos, the Greek word, means people whose life and character resembles that of God. They are governed by the Holy Ghost. Their life and character is, resembles that which is of God. They have a very distinct unity with the father. As a mature of God, the heos. So he says, when we were in the peos, when we were babes, we were governed. Let's go back, Galatians chapter 4, verses. Hey, we, were, we were in bondage under the elements of the. And the next verse says, but when the fullness of the time was come, somebody said, Hallelujah, the fullness of time. When the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his heels. made of a woman, made under the law, heels, the spiritual the mature Christ. He says, and, and Christ redeemed that heal stage, right? To redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the heostasia, the maturity of sonship. To redeem them that were under the law, who are in appeals, that they might receive the adoption of sons. Heostasia, the place of maturity of sons. That means that our transition from that life of darkness into the life of salvation. It got us under the law, put us under grace. And when we're under grace, we became the mature ones of God. When we're still under the law, we're just an appeal, spiritual baby. So anybody under the law is a babe. I don't care how many degrees, how many years in the faith, how much you think you know. You understand what I'm saying? If you're still under the law, you're a babe. You have not received the full adoption. Of maturity heals the mature ones their character starts to resemble their life starts to be like the life of God they are governed by the Holy Ghost and everything they do they are united with the Holy Spirit they start to move in signs miracles and wonders easily why because God has worked in them as the mature ones of God next verse and because you are heals God has sent forth the spirit of his heals into your hearts crying Abba Father but the one which cries cries as a heels not as an appeals they don't call it oh God <laughs> I'm going to die help me no they cry oh God <laughs> you're so beautiful you're doing things in my life uncomparable way beyond my that cry is not for spiritual babies <laughs> give me my early mort no <laughs> It's not for, 
for eh? but it, when we were young we used to have things they call change but now I thank God for Docas which it is my mom could not tolerate she could not tolerate now why are you crying then you keep quiet immediately <laughs> you, you keep quiet. Why should you cry? Sometimes I look at parents with their kids and I'm like, these, 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 kids, these kids are under grace. Ngenda, why not of who you? Mokaba bukabi, ebitali mu, you are crying, okabi dachi. No! There was an age where you could cry. There is an age where you stop crying. But I find parents with children who have outgrown that level of crying. And they're also in the supermarket. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, no, yeah, this is Dorok. The kid is so big, but he's also crying. <laughs> and you're like, ah. Feel like you want to get the kid and say, Father, in the name of Jesus. <laughs> It, by the way, there is an, there is, listen, there is an age where kids can cry and you understand. And there is an age where we all will not understand. Parents, help us. You say, your kid is so big. He's also, <laughs> no, 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 no. So, we are not talking about that above father. No, we're talking of the mature. Hallelujah. Who know who they are? When you are crying as of the spirit of sonship, when you are a heels and the Lord sends the spirit of his heels, the way you say Abba Father is different. Hallelujah. You, you speak of strength in weakness. You speak of happiness in adversity. You speak of victory even in pain. You speak of triumph even in dismay. Because you are the, the mature of God. You're heels. For us, we don't cry. Oh, I'm that guy, I have problems. Oh, and no, even in the middle of problems, I like about Father Makota. I know that all things are working together for good because I love you and I'm called according to your Bakoranda Zetele. You go through situations like a mature one. Somebody shout hallelujah. You go through circumstances like a mature child. Praise the Lord things hit you and you show a level of maturity a level of maturity and people are looking at you and they're like eh, nay you sister you're strong you're like, no no i'm not strong i'm mature these things can't break me have you been in a situation where people look at you and they they don't understand you because you're different from how they expect you to be. You lost everything, but you're still smiling. Things maybe are not working the way they are, but you know who is you are and for whom you are. It's a place of knowing who knows you and the one knowing you. You see, when you're still a babe, God doesn't know you well. He doesn't understand you well. Oh, no, let's continue. Let's continue. Wherefore, Thou are no more a servant. The word there for servant is slave. That means you're not, you're not under the spirit of slavery. Of any kind. You're no longer a slave. He says, but a son, a heels. And if a heels, then an heir of God through Christ. That means inheritance starts to follow you. Hallelujah. When you're a man who has understood the grace of God, you walk in, in, in a grace of heirship. You, you, you walk in the inheritance. The things that you have inherited start walking in your life. And the next verse. How be it then, when you knew not God, he takes you back to the law. You did service unto them which by nature were no gods. You did service. That is deep. When you didn't know God, you did service. <laughs> You understand? We're in Nakasura Primary, and then we were singing a folk song. You know those songs of Mvawala, 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 Mvawala. It was, it was an African traditional song, but was a center of demonic worship. But that was a folk song. 
And the most competitive house used to do it. And then they win. You remember that song? Mvawala, mvawala. Mvawala, munkubire, mungalo. You remember that? The, the, then a, a, a judge comes like this. Vudewaru senya. Nganambule vivanja. Mungalo, mvawala. Muguliri sevi, no. Then judge starts to demand that demon. Njagale mbuze nyeru. Mvawala. Now, there was a boy who was acting Jaja's part. For us, we didn't know that in their family, they had things. So when the boy starts to say, Mbawala, Mbawala, you understand? The things hit the guy, and we don't know that the guy is under demon, demon activity. We didn't even have a clue. But when the song is almost the end, we say, Mbawala, 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 ah, we finish. When we finish, the boy continues, ooh, ooh, ooh. The parents went behind. <laughs> They carried him and put him in the car. And the Corolla went up. When the boy is still like this. <laughs> so when you were babes, demons used to torment you. But Jaja, ba Mwanga, ba, ba Mutia, ba, all of those demons, they, they used. But now! <laughs> Tell your neighbors at Tabandoga! You can't bewitch me. You can't send witchcraft on me. How can you send witchcraft on me? What are you talking about? Greater is he which is in me than he that is in the world. That is why people who teach the law, they also teach generational curses. People who teach generational curses, are the same people who teach the law. You watch. Now the judge at the grand. I told people. I saw a young man one time. Leading people to repent. We have to repent. We have to repent. We killed the Indian coolies. People went down. God forgive us. For killing the coolies. Ah, listen. The soul that sin shall die. If my great grandfather eat, killed an Indian coolie. Let him finish with this God. I'm a new creation for the old is past and now the new and all things are of God. I didn't kill no coolie. Our grandfathers killed. Let them kill. He says, this say shall not be said again in Israel that the parents have eaten of bitter fruits and their children sit at the teeth that set on the edge. He said, and the soul that sinneth shall die. Every man shall pay of his sin. If your grandfather killed, let him kill. You have no business for your grandfather's business to follow you up. You're not under those elements. Those were when you knew not God. Now you knew God. Next verse. But now... After you have known God, or rather are known of God, when the Bible says the Lord knows his own, he starts to know you when your heels. How do you turn again to the weak beggarly elements where until you desire again to be in bondage? Why? How can you go back into those God demons? Recently, I was somewhere praying, and then somebody started, we break those spirits that stand in the... You know why Panera is growing every Thursday? Because we don't have time for the devil. But people in their churches, before the service begins, No, I still chase devils. I still chase devils. For people who have refused to grow. I do. But when they grow, I don't chase devils anymore. Some people think that everywhere there is a lot of activity, there is maturity. No. Sometimes, sometimes, when people also step babies, they say, oh, <laughs> yeah, you get it. We still chase devils, but to the immature. But when you grow up, you have to get to a level whereby you also can feel and smell and say, mm -hmm, not demon. <laughs> you! Praise God. Praise God. You are known of him. You are known of him. Give me the message of that. Let's continue. Message version. But now that you know the real God, the real one, right? Or rather, since God knows you, how can you possibly subject yourselves again to those paper tigers? He calls them paper tigers. They're not real. Paul, he calls them paper tigers. They're not real. You know, you say paper tiger, then you run, ah, why? Can you believe him? Apostle, someone threw things on my gate. Let them throw. 
They told me one time I woke up in the morning to go to work and there was a chicken on the gate. I just did like this. <laughs> you! Somebody say yeah. <laughs> But some of you, they put a chicken, we break, we break, we break, we break. You, you, call salt, 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 oil, oil, water, water. Elements. Praise God. Paper tigers. And the next verse says, let's continue. For that is exactly what you do when you are intimidated into scrupulously observing all the traditions, taboos, superstitions associated with special days, seasons, years, something like that. He says, I'm afraid that all my hard work among you has gone off in smoke. He looks at the guys and he realizes he preached to them and they still don't get it. Simanya me, I don't go out this day. Simanya me, if I don't do this. Simanya, when you go out and then you find a, a, a woman in the morning, Simanya, you're not going to get money. Simanya, when you find a black cat, it is a sign of omen. Simanya, when you dream, when this is chasing you, it means this. When you dream, Simanya, when this is happening to you, it's, it means this. So, so, I dream when a cat is chasing me, I wake up, I chase it. I don't need to know the meaning of it. Hallelujah. I dream when a lion is, is chasing after me. I wake up in the morning and like David, I run after it. I tear. Mokatale. And I'm going upward and upward only. Hey, you, you don't know dreams. No. I taught about them. I even took people under deliverance service about them. And they were still not changed. Because it's not about the dream. It's about the spirit under which you function. Those are elements. Those are nothing. You dream that they are beating you, you wake up and beat them. Don't even find out the me for, for what? You dream that you're dying, you wake up and, and dance and say, Mom, I'm going to leave. Woo! You dream when you are leaving, you say, Aha, confirmation. <laughs> no. Let me tell you, the ingredient that sealed any dream that can ever be against me was in a simple scripture. He said, whatsoever you bind, kakati, on earth it shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you loosen on earth it shall be loosened in heaven. I don't care whether you've dreamt when you're going to die. Loosen life! But now they're even lying to you. Recently I was watching a video with a certain man of God and this guy said, when you dream of a mango, it means you're going somewhere. Man, go. Yes. <laughs> Get to your feet and we thank God. Obaba loga bakolechi. Wakusa ben viringo musali na dalezi wera. Ya joku nyumi antio yote ba muloga. We were in Mukono. Some people know this story. We were in Mukono. A witch doctor used to put on music where we used to preach from. You remember some of you? I was in an overnight. I got so mad that this guy was putting, and he was a witch doctor. We all knew him. I went behind like this on the guy's building and where he had put the music. I looked at those speakers and immediately they stopped. Psst. And the witch doctor fell in his house and ran mad immediately. The wife locked him up in, in the room. And the man ran mad for some time. They had to conjure the demons to bring him back to sanity. So one time they told the guy, we want you to meet a person and make peace. Then he says, ah, me, I can't, witch, I can't, I can't meet that man. He, he's, he's more witch than me. Mulogo <laughs> kusi a direct translation. I'm sorry for the English. You can't tell, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? That is it. Maketele. bakatala bojire bakatala. What are you talking about? Musimaya, they put things in the office. Let them add them. Hallelujah. God will promote you. He will increase you. He will prosper. You will go upward and upward only until they are saying, Naye, what is wrong with you? Come on, put up your hands and thank Jesus. 
Thank God for his grace. Great is our faithfulness. Oh, oh, oh Lord. Great is our faithfulness. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercy. words upon you by reason of the anointing present the word that has been spoken and the marks that have been laid on our souls even as the word of God has been going out I want to speak upon your life and say it is well with you it is well with your family it is well with your career it is well with your relationship it is well with your destiny nothing can stand against you God is ahead of you he is with you and is behind you he has set hedges before you. There are crowns upon your life. Nothing will fail you in this life. God knows you even as you know him. You cannot be submitted to the beggarly elements. The Bible calls them the beggarly elements of this world. The things that are in themselves afflicted even as they seem to afflict. I decree upon your life that you are above attacks. You are above sickness. You are above disease. You are above weakness. You are above poverty. You are above lack. You are above uh, disadvantage. You are great. Greater is he in you than he that is in the world. You are more than a conqueror by Christ who strengthens you. You are the hills of God and you possess the spirit of his hills and you cry Abba Father in the bliss of revelation of what he has done for he has blessed you with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. He has given you all things that pertain to life and godliness. If you receive it, shout Amen! It is done! It is done! It is so done! 